welcome to the one more session of uh, embedded microcontroller and embedded system this is Vasan Nayak from Kendra Engineering College uh, in this session we will see the core of the embedded system that is what are the core components or brain components used in uh, used inside the embedded system so other than that here we will discuss First of all, the core of uh, core, core components of the embedded, embedded system like processor, microprocessor, microcontroller, yeah, microprocessor, microcontroller, digital signal processor, uh, normally which is used in uh, uh, used to deal with the uh, data like uh, multimedia data like audio video and uh, we also discuss uh, application specific integrated circuit then application specific standard pro uh, like uh, product uh, other than that uh, we will uh, discuss here uh, the different types of memory input output device sensors actuators then uh, various uh, communication interface uh, which is used in embedded system so you can see from the diagram you can see from the diagram this is actually this is this is the core of the system this controller can be this controller can be either microprocessor or microcontroller or FPGA that is uh, field programmable uh, gate array or it can be digital signal processor or it can be application specific integrated circuit or it can be application specific standard <coughs> product. so and so so this is the actually main controller of the embedded system so basically embedded hardware and software basically designed to regulate the physical variable or manipulate the state of some variable by sending some control signal to the actuator or devices connected to the output port so here you can see we have input port to the input port we have connected sensors that means sensor will going to connect uh, sensors are connected to the input port and uh, which sensors will take the input uh, from the external world uh, and it will pass that input to the uh, corresponding uh, electronic circuit and in the output uh, you can see the actuators uh, are connected uh, to the output uh, and the output device also you can see we connect here LEDs, buzzer, so and so. So other than that, so if I want to give the example for input device, then input device are like keyboard, like input device are keyboard, uh, then push button switches, and output device are LEDs, uh, then liquid crystal displays, uh, display. Other than that, uh, uh, electronic buzzer. All those are the output device similarly we can see here like memory a small memory which is responsible for holding the controlling algorithm or logic based on this logic this embedded system will work and the other configuration details so what actually this memory contains this memory contains actually um, embedded firmware I told in the previous uh, uh, video the difference between firmware and software firmware means it's a software permanently stored it cannot be reprogrammed so it cannot be reprogrammed other than that you need to connect this embedded system to the uh, to the external world by means of communication interface so how do i make 
my embedded system core can communicate with the external world by means of a communication interface this contains usb communication uh, other than that uh, tcp ip communication wifi communication such as uh, i mean wireless communication such as uh, like uh, bluetooth zigbee etc so we have other supporting uh, integrated circuit for example brownout circuit which is used uh, to reset the embedded system when the uh, input or output voltages uh, goes below certain threshold value so this is the actual uh, various functional parts of the embedded system so the controller can be as i said earlier it's a microprocessor like intel 8085 or uh, like different types of microprocessor microcontroller or uh, field programmable gate array fega device such as xilinx or spartan so when it comes to field programmable gate array it's a programmable logic device which can be reconfigured to perform any function by software the great advantage of this uh, field uh, programmable gate array is that the chip is completely programmable and can be reprogrammed it has got uh, many planes of uh, millions of uh, and gate not gate or gate all these are controlled by software i mean programmable by software other than that we have something called a digital signal processor uh, which basically used to uh, modulate uh, the data Uh, which is related to multimedia then you have something called as application specific integrated circuit which is uh, which is meant for particular application or particular hardware other than that we have application specific standard product like uh, like ad 7760s uh, ic which is used in single phase energy metering uh, meter which will uh, uh, which will uh, act actually calculate the power consumption uh, in the uh, uh, electrical meter which is used in the household application so the difference between ascii and uh, asp is uh, ascii is uh, proprietary that means uh, it is not available in the uh, open market uh, application specific standard product uh, it is not non proprietary that is it can be sold out in the open market so the main purpose of the embedded uh, embedded system is embedded system consists of hardware and software and basically designed to regulate the physical variable to manipulate the state of the some uh, state of some device which is connected through input or output uh, normally input is a uh, like uh, input is connected to the sensor and output is connected to the, through actuator and we have the memory which is responsible for holding control algorithms and other logics so now <coughs> now uh, we will discuss uh, one by one uh, the core of the embedded system first we will see uh, uh, the in the core of the embedded system first we will see the controller controller can be as i said uh, it can be microprocessor microcontroller digital signal processor or as i said uh, ascii ascii like ascii says uh, this one ic or programmable logic device or sometimes uh, commercial of the self components cards so these are different types of the like controllers are used here so now first one is a microprocessor we know what is a microprocessor microprocessor is integrated with a chip which can process the data uh, by the help of uh, like control unit and alu and which has got a small memory which can store the set of instructions so my cpu contains arithmetic and logic unit so different types of cpus are available in the market so in the, uh, the first cpu was, was from intel was 404 which was a four bit microprocessor in developed in 1971 intel 808 8080 sorry 88 8080 was uh, came into the market in the year of 1975 uh, simultaneously at the meantime uh, like motorola developed uh, something called as 6800 with different instruction architecture compared to intel uh, in uh, the next version of the intel 808 uh, 8080 was 8085 which is a 8 bit microprocessor so in uh, july 1976 uh, 
Zilog entered into the market with uh, its own processor called as Z80 processor uh, as a competitor to the Intel. So these are the different uh, vendors. Uh, they are the key players in the processor market like Intel, AMD, uh, Cyrix, uh, Nvidia. All these are the different uh, players. They uh, they play key role in the processor market. So now, now we uh, we uh, after uh, talking about uh, microprocessor, now we'll see microcontroller. You know the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. So microcontroller is a highly integrated chip, chip which has got both CPU and RAM, ROM and other input and output uh, uh, ports, uh, etc. So it has got uh, one board RAM, ROM, RAM, flash memory and uh, dedicated input and output uh, port. So microcontroller uh, contain all the necessary functional blocks for independent working. Microprocessor doesn't have all the blocks for independent working. So, if you see the history of the microcontroller, uh, the first microcontroller was from Texas, Texas Instruments, uh, TMS 1000 in 1974. And first microcontroller, uh, uh, like uh, first micro, uh, microprocessor or microcontroller from Intel was 404 4-bit processor, which is used in uh, uh, calculator design, uh, which is a calculator is nothing but embedded system. Then in uh, uh, like uh, 1987, Intel came with 8051, it is a 8-bit microcontroller. <coughs> so next one is 8051 processor, cores are used in more than uh, 100 devices uh, by more than 20 independent manufacturers like Maximum, Maxim, Philips, uh, Atmel, etc. Uh, the one major uh, key factor for the use of uh, this microcontroller was uh, low cost and widely available and uh, memory efficient instruction set, uh, nature development tools, uh, sorry, mature development tools and uh, Boolean processing that is bit manipulation operation. So 8051 family derivative microcontroller are much used in high volume consumer uh, electronics. Uh, and entertainment industry. Now we'll see couple of points led to the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. Already we are aware of this one. Microprocessor generally doesn't have RAM and ROM I/O pins. Microcontroller have ROM and uh, as a RAM and I/O port all on the chip. Microprocessor usually use its uh, pins. As, as a bus to interface to RAM and ROM. Normally RAM and ROM, uh, all these memory devices are, should be interfaced to the microprocessor, but here it is internal. That's why the circuitry design of the microprocessor becomes uh, uh, somewhat uh, like uh, complicated. Microprocessor processors are generally capable of uh, uh, being built into bigger general uh, process. Actually, it is uh, microprocessor are used for to build general purpose application, but microcontroller are used for specific application. And uh, because of the so many components used, uh, so many components are interfaced to the uh, external interface to the microprocessor. They don't have power scheme in a saving system, but microcontrollers have power saving systems. Uh, it's built in. So the overall cost of the microprocessor systems are very high. The overall cost of the microcontroller systems are low. But speed of the microprocessors are in terms of gigahertz, uh, above one one gigahertz. Uh, but the processing speed of microcontroller from uh, which ranges from eight megahertz to uh, 50 megahertz. Uh, and uh, one more thing is uh, microprocessors are based on uh, 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 like uh, one human uh, model. One human model means uh, where is only one uh, memory is used for program and data. But that means program and data are stored in the same memory. But in microcontroller, the program is uh, microcontroller is based on most of the microcontrollers are based on uh, something like. Uh, Award architecture where program memory is different and data memories are separate. Now we will see the digital signal processor. Uh, these are the powerful special processor like uh, 16 bit, 32 bit microprocessor designed to meet uh, computational demands of uh, uh, demands, computational demands, especially it is used to deal with the, the data related to audio and video, especially the data related to multimedia. So digital signal processor are two to three times faster and DSP implement algorithms in hardware that's why it is a faster. So 
DSP can be viewed as a microchip designed designed for performing high speed computational operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, etc. And uh, so, what are the basic component like? What are the basic uh, functional parts of our key units of uh, uh, digital signal processor? The digital signal processor contains program memory, which holds the uh, like uh, program, then data memory, which is uh, working memory for storing temporary variables. Then computational engines, uh, which is actually performs the uh, signal processing in according in accordance with the instruction. Then uh, which has got I/O unit uh, acts as interface between outside world and uh, DSP. So uh, you need to understand uh, one thing here. So digital signal processors are used in audio video signal processing, telecommunication, and multimedia application. Digital signal processing employs large amount of real-time calculations, uh, the, like uh, some of products SOP. We know that one. Then uh, uh, for, uh, fast Fourier uh, Fourier transform, then uh, discrete Fourier transform, etc. All these type of calculations are performed by digital signal uh, processor, digital signal processor, which are necessary uh, when uh, it processes the multimedia related data, audio and video data. Now next category of the processor are RISC versus CISC. So the full form of RISC is reduced instruction set computing and full form of CISC is a complex instruction set computing. So most of the microcontrollers are based on the RISC but ARM is ARM has adopted the property of both RISC and CISC. So now all the RISC processor controllers processors or controllers process less number of instruction but CISC stands for complex instruction set computing and it processes complex instructions. So now we see the difference between CISC and RISC. Like you see here, uh, the complex instruction and taking multiple clock cycles, like uh, CISC instructions are taking multiple clock cycles, like various type of instruction, like uh, 1 by 2 by 3 by 4 by 2, 5 by 6 by like that. Here, CISC instructions are like simple instructions and taking single clock. For example, if you say take ARM7, all instructions are 32 bit, 4 bytes and taking single clock. Almost all instruction, almost all instruction. Here, emphasis on the hardware, uh, hardware complexity is on the micro program processor. Here, the complexity on the software. So complex instructions are executed by the processor. Here reduce instruction. Reduce instruction means uh, it is not like uh, uh, less number of instruction. We can say there is a like uh, there, there there won't be a multiple form of same instruction. For example, uh, if you take a CISC processor, then there is a instruction. Suppose if you consider add instruction, there is a add instruction for uh, there is a add instruction for uh, register operation and there is a add, add instruction for memory related operation. If you take uh, ADC add with carry, there is a add, add with carry instruction for register related operation and there is a add with carry instruction for memory related operation. But same thing with this is, RISC is uh, RISC operates most in the RISC processor it operates on uh, load and store architecture. Load and store means uh, most of the operation will be carried out uh, in the register rather than in the memory. That's why there will be only one form of instruction than the multiple form of instructions. And uh, uh, because of variable format instruction, single register set and many instructions, here variable format instruction, here fixed format instruction. May, uh, because of the different uh, like different instruction related to oh, memory as well as register, in CISC, there are, there are different addressing modes, but in RISC, there are fixed and few addressing modes. So, <coughs> here memory reference is embedded in many instructions. Here memory reference is embedded in only load and store instruction. That is the difference between a CISC and a RISC. And one more thing is, a, uh, <coughs> CISC and a RISC, uh, like, Emphasis the different types of memory architecture that is one is R word, other one is one human. I have told already what is a one human. One human architecture like both the data and uh, like data 
and uh, instructions i mean stored in the uh, same memory but in avad architecture there is separate memory for data separate memory for the instructions so most of the microcontrollers are uh, based on most of the microcontrollers are based on like uh, one m1 architectures most of the microprocessor and microcontroller are based on the one m1 architectures but risk processors are based on uh, avad architectures but ar makes use of uh, both now you can see uh, the difference between avad uh, uh, architecture and uh, one m1 architecture here you can see single shared bus between memory input output but here you see there is a separate bus for program memory and there is a separate bus for data memory so if you see the difference between one human architecture and avad architecture single shared bus for the instruction and data separate buses for the instruction and data patching chances of accidental corruption of program memory chances of accidental corruption there is a lot of chances of accidental corruption of program memory as the data memory and program memory are stored physically in the same chip but here no chances of accidental corruption of program memory and data memory because they are stored in the different locations and different chips or different locations low performance compared to the uh, like here it is a low performance compared to the avad architecture because both data and uh, uh, this one are stored in the same memory that's why low performance but here it is a performance high because it's easier to pipeline high performance can be achieved then here So here some memory alignment problems are there, but uh, in this architecture there is no memory alignment problem. Now we need to understand what is the difference between uh, big end and, and uh, little end. So we uh, you call this as a big end and, and a little end. So normally this uh, actually specifies the order in which data is stored. So in case of uh, a little end. Uh, <coughs> little end if you see this is the lower address so we have a lower address 20000 20001 20002 20000 starts from 20000 20001 20, 23 20000 the base address then we have four byte of data that is the lsb is byte 0 byte 1 byte 2 and byte 3 then lower byte is stored in the lower address higher byte is stored in the higher address this is related to little end so what about big end so in the big end you see here so address is once again like this is the base address 2001 2002 2003 but we have byte uh, byte 0 byte 1 byte 2 byte 3 so uh, lower byte is stored you see here uh, like uh, lower byte is stored in the higher address and uh, higher byte is stored in the lower address so this is the difference between uh, little end and uh, big end uh, this indicates the order in which uh, data are uh, data are stored in the memory so next one is a load store operation and instruction pipelining risk processor instruction set is orthogonal risk processor instruction set is orthogonal means uh, it operates on registers most of the time in the risk processor operates on the register so memory related operations are very less for example if you take arm7 arm7 uh, operates 90% uh, of the time arm instructions are operates on the register like uh, uh, load and store is used to fetch the instructions from the memory but uh, uh, whatever the operation it will be performed in the register only so there is no operation will be performed on the memory <laughs> that's why disk processors are rigid but it is faster so the memory access related operation uh, performed by special instruction load and store in the disk processor so here this architecture shows how load and store operation take place suppose we have three memory location x y z these are the three memory locations and we want to add the content of x and y and store the result in z store the result in z so this is x y z three memory location and these are the data in the three memory locations these are the 
like these are the data like x in the location x contains 0 0 in the location y it contains a 7 f so so uh, in the risk processor what it will do is uh, it will first load the uh, content from the memory to the register r1 uh, that is this content is loaded here this content is loaded here like in the second instruction then it will add register r1 and r2 and store the result in r3 finally uh, store the uh, content of r3 in the memory by using load and store operation so load is used to load the content from the memory to the register and store is used to store the content back to the memory so only the two operations works on the memory that is load and store rest all the operation works on the register so we need to understand here conventional instruction execution by the processor follows fetch decode and execute fetch means uh, this part will fetch the instruction from the program memory or code memory decode means it will analyze the instructions and sends the necessary signal control signal to the various functional unit execute means uh, uh, <coughs> stage reads the operands perform the alu and alu related operation and shows the result so in order to improve improve the performance uh, ARM risk processor this controller makes use of pipeline pipeline will uh, improve the process uh, sorry performance now we will move to the next component that is application specific integrated circuit the as i told earlier the application specific integrated circuits are meant for particular uh, particular purpose like it is designed for particular purpose this chip is designed for particular application so uh, one thing you need to remember here this application specific integrated circuits are uh, like proprietary this is designed for particular uh, application particular design something like that it cannot be sold in the open market so what this chip will do this integrates several function into single chip and thereby reduce the system development cost so this chip uh, contains several uh, functions into single chip and uh, reduce the system cost so it will consume less power also and less uh, area also ASCII's can be prefabricated on a special application or it can be custom custom fabricated by using uh, components so it is a custom design so what are the features of the ASCII and what are the drawbacks of ASCII so the features of ASCII are NRE that is non recurring engineering charges that is one time expenses for the process technology and configuration expenses then less complex the circuit is less complex because it is actually designed for particular particular function no need to include several functionality then which can give high performance and lower power low power consumption because uh, circuit contain contain like the I, this I, uh, IAIC contains the required amount of circuits for the particular particular function that's why these are the advantage then drawbacks is inflexible design like this design is meant for particular application so it cannot be flexible updates requires re redesign in the case I need to update the particular uh, this one then I, I, I need to redesign it deploy deployed system cannot be upgraded for example if I uh, deploy this one if i uh, adopt this in particular design that design cannot be upgraded uh, you need to go for a re uh, entire redesign a complex and ex exp expensive development tool so since it is meant for particular uh, applications uh, so particular tools are required and those tools are complex and uh, expensive mistakes in product development are costly suppose if, if any mistakes uh, happens in the product development uh, which will be uh, which are uh, costly So next other than that so here is the difference between uh, application specific integrated circuit and application uh, specific standard product actually ASCII's are microchip designed to perform specific application and most of the ASCII's are proprietary product as I told earlier but if the third party is ready to pay NRE cost we know what is NRE non recurring engineering charges and ASCII is made, made available or into the market, open market, then ASCII is referred as a ASSP, that is Application Specific Standard Product. 
so uh, normally this is available openly available in the market now next one is uh, uh, we need to see the difference now various difference between different type of processor first one is a general pro purpose processor versus application specific instruction set processor asip we know gpp is a processor designed for general computational task like uh, pentium 4 amd etc gpp contains arithmetic and logic unit and control unit asp asip are the processor with architecture and instruction set optimized for specific domain specific domain or specific application uh, requirements so next uh, we have something called as a programmable logic device so by using programmable logic device you can implement uh, various uh, functions various functions uh, so including device to device interfacing data communication signal processing almost all these can be implemented so there are two categories of uh, programmable logic device one is called a fixed second one is a uh, programmable so fld offers customers a wide range of uh, logic capacity features uh, speed features speed and uh, voltage characteristics uh, now we'll see what are the two different types of uh, pld so first of all uh, before moving to the two different types of pld what are the advantages of pld programmable logic device offer a number of advantage over the fixed logic device including field offer customer much more flexibility then second don't require long time uh, long lead time for prototypes production don't require customer to pay for a large nre allow customers to order just the number of uh, number of parts they need reprogrammed even if a piece of equipment is a uh, shift so all these are the different types of advantages now so there are two types of uh, uh, like uh, uh, flds one is uh, field programmable gate arrays field programmable gate arrays i told what is this field for programmable gate arrays other one is complex programmable logic device actually actually this one fpga is a, is a programmable logic device which can be reconfigured to perform any function by software Act, uh, this has several planes and each plane contains of millions of uh, like gates like and gates or gate not gates and all these can be programmed by using software great advantage of uh, fpj is uh, that chip can completely programmable or reprogrammable second one is the complex programmable logic device uh, cplds so here are here are the difference between cplds and uh, uh, field programmable uh, gate arrays uh, let me read out one or two plds are used to construction of uh, cplds uh, but logic blocks are used for the construction of uh, fpjs cplds is non volatile and less costly fpjs are volatile and costly we know this one uh, and uh, there are some other differences uh, like uh, prediction of delay is difficult in fpga operating speed is high and uh, is suitable for timing circuit but here operating speed is low all these are different types of uh, uh, differences uh. similarly we have differences between uh, fpga and ascii uh, fpga is reprogrammable ascii are unique type of integrated circuit fpga is not uh, efficient in terms of use of materials uh, but uh, ascii wastes very little material fpga is better than ascii when uh, building low volume production circuit cost of ascii is low only when it is produced in larger quality fpga is alterable uh, ascii cannot be alterable all these are the different difference between uh, fpga and uh, ascii then the last one is uh, commercial of the self component cords see actually cords is the product uh, which is the other name for this one is uh, used as is use it as it is Cords for products are designed in such a way that uh, which can be easily integrated in the other existing system without any modification. And cost component uh, may be developed around the general purpose domains or specific purpose or application specific integrated circuits. 
so uh, for example you can see uh, different types of the uh, like the for example the uh, example of uh, uh, cards uh, this one this is the uh, actually uh, the, the circuit or a, a simple pcb design suppose this can be suppose if i uh, want my embedded system to have a connection lan connection then this can be i can connect this to the existing embedded system by simply knowing uh, the like uh, the signals of the various pins without modifying this board or the existing embedded system so here i can connect the my lan signal through tcp ip like this it's this type of uh, cords are easily integrated in the embedded system without any modification so cords are cheap cords are readily available in the market developer can cut down is around development time to greater extent so i told the what are the examples like tcp ip plug in module available from the various manufacturers that can be used uh, used as shown then the benefits of the cost based system reduce the development cost to improve the memory uh, the software development process to reduce the software life cycle so all these are the different types of uh, advantages so with this uh, i will wind up this session so in the next session we will see the memory and different uh, uh, configurations related to the memory thank you